Right there guys, how's it going? So, busy day today with these videos, isn't it? So, we've had two other articles that have come out a little bit earlier on today, but I just haven't had time to touch on them yet. Um, one of them's from Paul Joyce, which is very much bigging up Ruben Amarim, and why he would be a good candidate to be the Klopp replacement. And then also, there is another article by Chris Bascom at The Telegraph, saying that Liverpool could get Ruben Amarim for as little as 12.8 million after Xabi Alonso snubbed them. So, let's touch this um, Paul Joyce one first, because, you know, he seems to be the one that's on the ball of a lot of things lately. So, this was out at 12 o'clock today, and it says, it's titled, How Ruben Amarim Caught Liverpool's Eye in Hunt to Replace Jurgen Klopp. Innovative coach transformed Sporting Lisbon and could now be in the frame for the manager's job at Anfield with Alonso expected to stay at Leverkusen. Now, just to frame all this, because, you know, there's some new people on the channel now. Um, Joyce seems to be on the ball with all of this. He seems to be, ever since Edwards came back, he seems to be the one that's getting everything. You know, <laughs> I have got the book in front of me, guys. Um, and if you go through the notes that I've made here, Joyce was the one that was first to announce the whole Edwards coming back. Joyce was the one that announced Hughes coming in as the sporting director. Um, so yeah, he's on it this time is um, is Paul Joyce. So I'm just going to skip a few bits of it here and there because it starts off about how he was as a player and blah, 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 blah. blah. So he has won two League Cups and a Super Cup. In other words, he returned to the club sporting to a level where Benfica and Porto have been in recent years. A young, innovative coach capable of upsetting football's natural order by eking out improvement from players through his man management and tactical skills. Liverpool's due diligence on Xabi Alonso has indicated he will not be stepping away from Bayer Leverkusen, who are 10 points clear of Bayern Munich at the top of the Bundesliga. Um. However, there are others who fit the criteria Liverpool are seeking, and Amarim, now 39, so I think he is it's two years younger than Alonso, yeah, has been closely scrutinised since the start of the process, regardless of Alonso being championed by supporters and the media since the day Klopp announced his departure. You know what? That ties into that video I did earlier on today, the first video I did today. I I put a theory out there, like, I think it's titled... Something like, was was Alonso ever going to happen or something like that? Or, or has it, was it always going to be Amarim? In fact, he's mentioned that there, that little bit there, that Amarim has been scrutinised since the start of the process, regardless of Alonso being championed by us, the fans and the media, not saying the club, he ain't saying Liverpool's been championing him, he's saying that us... And the media have been doing that around Alonso, which was my point in my video that maybe Alonso was never really a target. And we were just, as Liverpool fans, getting a bit romanticised with the idea of bringing back Alonso to become the manager with his Liverpool connection. And the media were using it to generate clicks and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Just, it's just the way he's worded that there. It just makes me think I was on the right track earlier. Mm. Since Amarun's appointment four years ago, um, this month, research by Opta Analyst shows that Sporting have won 10 more points than Benfica, uh, 330 to 320, and trail Porto only by seven. He has averaged 2.39 points per game during his tenure, when in the 136 games prior to his arrival, Sporting averaged 2.13. An ability to coax the best out of players has ushered many to greater prominence. Paulinha, now at Fulham, Pedro Porro at Tottenham, Mateus Nunes, who was a player that Liverpool wanted, um, who was at Wolves, then Man City, and Manuel Yagate, another player who Liverpool wanted, who's now at PSG, among those who have left in recent years, totaling £150 million. So, again, that fits well with FSG's model of wanting to get players in for cheap and selling them for more expensive. 
The downside to that talent drain meant that Sporting stumbled last season, falling out of the top three and failing to win a trophy. But they regrouped in the summer with the club record signing of Victor Gerakos, the Swede striker, for 17 million addressing a sorted of goals. The Swede international scored 36 times in 39 appearances this season and is the centre point of a front three that usually features Goncalves and Marcus Edwards. I would not be surprised, guys, if Goncalves or Edwards ends up at Liverpool if um, Amarin is the man. Edwards, the former Tottenham youngster, is the only one of those players who is said to have benefited from Amarin's man management skill. Ooh. The way that he said that about Edwards there, maybe Edwards, because he does play the same position that um, Salah plays at the moment. Amarin's favourite formation is 3-4-3. I am going to do a video about Amarin's tactics, uh, like I did the Jabi Alonso one. While a lot of Sporting's build-up play comes through the middle from the centre-halves, one of their strengths is deemed to be their ability to pick the right time to feed the ball into the wide areas and cause teams problems using the pace and creativity of the free attackers. Hmm. There's a lot of data here, guys. I don't know if this is very interesting to you. I'm near the end of it. According to Opta, they lead the league for the number of direct attacks, but can also vary their style. Coming out on top also for build-up attacks, which is the number of open play sequences containing 10 or more passes that either end in a shot or at least one touch in the opposition box. Sporting also lead the league for an average open play possession time per sequence, 10.8 seconds. Should Sporting hold their nerve over the coming weeks, they host Benfica and then travel to Porto among the remaining league fixtures, then Amarin would be the first man to win more than one league title at the club since the early 1950s. He's pretty much there, Jurgen Klopp, isn't he? <laughs> of course, success in Portugal does not bring with it any guarantees in the Premier League. Mourinho excelled, where Andres Villas Boas and Bruno Lag, is it Lag or Large? found the going much tougher. For now, Liverpool will continue their background checks as they look to formulate Plan A, but Norvo believes Amarim is destined for greatest, greatness. He is a young coach, this is in quotes, a master at the communication and with the quality necessary to be a reference in international football. So that's the end of it. That seems to be a load of... You might have seen a little bit of gobbledygook all that to you guys, but... Basically, what I'm trying to say is that Joyce has put this out there to big him up because Joyce got ahead of the Alonso announcement today last night with his uh, article last night, basically saying that Liverpool were stepping away from Alonso. Got ahead of all that. Alonso has made his announcement and then he's put another one out, which he would have been working on for a long time because there's a lot of data in this, guys. Basically, bigging him up. So... Yeah, at the point of recording, I would say that Ruben Amarim is going to be the next manager of Liverpool based on this because, you know, if you think that, you know, if you believe the same as some of us that, uh, how would I word this, that Joyce is getting his um, information, shall we say, directly from people at the club, then yeah. <laughs> I'll leave it at that, yeah. Um, so yeah, next one, guys, is the article from the Telegraph, and I don't think this is going to be as big. Nah. Um, basically, they're saying here that Liverpool could land Ruben Amarim for twelve point eight million. Um, the Telegraph understands the release clause in Amarim's contract that can be triggered at the end of the season is fifteen million euros. The clause agreed with Sporting drops to 8.5 million in the summer of 2025 and its existence means it will be easier for Liverpool to agree a deal with the Portuguese club should they eventually decide to move for a highly move on from the highly related 39 year old hmm see going back to this guys this book this video seems to be all over the place again I apologize but when he was first mentioned with us it was his release clause was mentioned to be like £25 million, pounds, I think. And I think that was back in early February. I don't think... I, yeah. Here we go. £15 
3rd of February it was announced here that Liverpool were interested in him and he's got a release clause of £25 million. But then if you go to the end of February, The Athletic, David Ornstein and James Pearce put an article out saying that Amarin scored high on the data and his release clause was £8.6 million, which is the same, basically, of what they're saying it will be next year. And then we had... Let me find it again. Didn't we have Paul Joyce state last night that Amarin's, article, Amarin's release clause was £17 million? And now we've got this article <laughs> saying it's 12.8. So what is it, guys? <laughs> If I had to trust anyone, I'd probably say Joyce, around about 17. Um, but yeah, seems to be a little bit all over the shop with these numbers, doesn't it? Just like this video, really, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I hope you're still here, guys. Um, let me know down in the comments below. Are you excited about Amarim coming to be the new Liverpool manager? And what do you think the release clause could potentially be for him as well, guys? I will be doing a video based on how Amarin's teams are set up to play, um, just like I did the Jabi Alonso one. Um, but yeah, I'll see you then, guys.